so we named a lot of guys. We named Matt Chandler. You talked about Tim Tim Keller, and we talked about Eric Mason and Russell Moore, and we, we named a lot of guys. Let's let's end the episode with you just giving me name and reason as briefly as you can. Who are the two guys in evangelicalism that, that you're the most concerned about? Two guys. You name them. And, yeah, if you could just maybe give me two Ooh. two guys. Okay. Yeah, that, that's hard because it, I feel like every week it's like a new guy that I'm like, okay, that's that's <laughs> that's a guy who's kind of. Yeah, you can give me right seventeen now, but, guys if you want, but <laughs> yeah, no. I'll, so whatever. Um, yeah, I just actually went back um, and listened to the 2018 lecture at T4G by David Platt because I, I hadn't really focused on him a lot, but with the current issues at McLean, I, I wanted to just kind of review uh, some of his stuff, and I would say. Yeah, he he's definitely I mean, he basically links um, he, he, uh, how, the easiest way for me to put this is in that particular speech. And this has gotten worse in other things he said, but he um, accuses people, he accuses the church, he accuses everyone in the room uh, at the conference of sin and grave sin. I mean, they need to repent. They're in danger of the judgment of God because there's disparities between black and white. And they don't do it. They don't do enough about it. That is not just a different take on sin or a different like, you know, category. I'm going to categorize this as sin when it's not. That's like a different concept of sin. You can passively be guilty of things that previous generations might have done or uh, things that you really are not even tangentially related to the things that are outside your purview. You may not be in sin at all, but you, you are because of the world that in the environment that you inhabit. And this is pure Marxism, pure social justice stuff. Um, but it, 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 it actually tampers with an understanding of sin itself when you do that. And, um, when you, when you tamper with sin and what sin actually is, you, you start tampering with the gospel. So, um, what, what, what is the good news actually, uh, you know, what, um, it, you're you're going to constantly be guilty. There's no way to really repent of it. There's no way to get out of it. You're going to be on the hamster wheel forever. There's really no flight at the end of the tunnel of forgiveness in that paradigm. So that's David Platt. I'll try to be quicker with you. Okay. So um, yeah. So, so like Tim Keller, right. Um, he constantly, um, he, what, what he does often is he'll make, justice this obligation that um like if you don't give this is a quote from him like in 2010 he said if you don't um and i'm kind of summarizing it a little but he is in uh the, i think it was in the christianity today um it's our obligation to give the poor as much as we can possibly give them and it's all based on need it's if because someone's poor we have an obligation to give them as much as we can possibly give away now, that may sound really good, but you, if you start to apply to that, if you call that justice and say that's what justice is and you conflate charity with justice, which is what he's doing, then you get into this weird position where, OK, justice is also a concept that, you know, apply that to the gospel. Everyone needs forgiveness. God doesn't forgive everyone. So is God now unjust? So it gives you into these weird spots. And so Tim Keller is another guy I would I think of as like a, a big threat. Um I'll give you just two more because I know we got to wrap up, but uh, these these are Southern Baptist guys, and they're they're smaller names: Jarvis Williams and Walter Strickland. Because I've done a lot of work on them. Jarvis Williams um, has integrated critical race theory into Christianity more than anyone else I know, and the main issue with that is he comes up with a Galatian type heresy at the end of the day. The gospel is about racial reconciliation, and racial reconciliation means that you have to platform these voices, you have to accept these narratives. Uh, you have to teach history a certain way. It's very specific. It's like, it's pretty long. Um, but um, he makes that part of the gospel, that that's what, that's what Paul's talking about uh, in Ephesians and in Galatians. He's, what, he's, what he's trying to do is um, break down that dividing wall of ethnicity and, and bring Jews and Gentiles together. But he then reads into that critical race theory. So dangerous guy. Um, that's not what that's talking about. And then, uh, and Walter Strickland is pushing liberation theology. He's one of the easiest in my mind because 
there's several times that he actually conflates the law with the gospel. And he literally adds works to the gospel. And will say things like, like, like there's one quote where he even says that the gospel is loving the Lord uh, with um, w- loving the Lord with, or loving, loving God and loving your neighbor is the gospel. It's like, that's the law, man. That's what condemns you. But then his, his version of love is liberation theology. So um, those are four guys. So I'll give you a bonus too. But um, guys I'm concerned about, guys who in different ways uh, are um, promoting ideas that either if you think through them logically, they destroy the gospel or um, they do directly actually uh, tamper with the gospel. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, would you consider supporting this ministry by giving a donation of any amount? You can do so by going to our website, rightresponseministries.com. Let's be frank. Sadly, many evangelical pastors and leaders are serving as nothing more than water carriers for the political left. Just as those in the political left hate you, just like those corporations that are left-leaning hate you, these pastors and evangelical leaders hate you. I know that's a strong, a strong statement to make. I'm aware of that, but it's true. They don't care about your personal liberty. They don't care about your freedom. They want you to love your neighbor at the expense of biblical truth, even if it means bearing false witness. That's not us. We're different. We're not the only ones. I don't want to be arrogant. God has reserved a remnant for himself in this time as he has all other ages and all other places, but they are few and far between. It's called a remnant for a reason. We need your help. We want to stand up to tyranny. We want to stand up to this new left totalitarian regime. We want to defend Christians and people, the salt of the earth, who love America and who love God's word. But we can't do it without your help. If you're not prepared or able to give a financial gift, one way that you can support this ministry is by simply subscribing to our YouTube channel and clicking the bell so that you'll be notified as we come out with new content. You can also help us by sharing our content on all your social media platforms so that more people can hear the truth of God's word with courage and fidelity. Thanks for tuning in. God bless.